Good morning everybody. Today we are in Plymouth, Massachusetts. We're at um, the historic Plymouth Rock. This is where the pilgrims, the guys with little pointy hats, the were Puritans who escaped England for religious reasons. And they came here to Plymouth, Massachusetts and established a colony. And I'll turn these around and you can check out the rock. <laughs> Uh, this is the rock. Notice that there's a big crack in it. That's because they hit it with the boat. And they carved 1620 in it. It's a form of the first graffiti. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but this is Plymouth Rock. Uh, supposedly, this little enshrined rock is the rock with a wrapped their rope around or whatever um, when they landed in the harbor over here. Beautiful harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, all right, we're gonna move on to the next part of the lake. Now they were at the Pilgrim State Park and uh, you can see the Pilgrims landed in 1620. that that was the first landing site of the Mayflower. And, oh, see, I didn't even know that. The rock was accidentally broken in two, horizontally, while being moved to Town Square, the bottom half is left in place and becomes part of Hedges Wharf. How do you like that? I didn't know that. Um, learning stuff with this. Uh, 20th anniversary of the landing, Daniel Webster appears to have begun to legend stating by beneath us the rock which the New England received the feet of the pilgrims. The top half of the rock moved from the town square to Pilgrim Hall in 1834. Uh, it's mostly all about the rock. And 1880, top of the rock, return to the harbor, and a car of 1620 on it. <laughs> but the tradition tells you that the, the pilgrims was uh, okay on again I am we are now at <coughs> I was still sick. We're at the statue of Massasoit, the great statue of the Wampanoags, protector and preserver of the Pilgrims, 1621. And here he is. That's a pretty cool picture of the Indians. He got him his peace pipe there. <laughs> I wonder where his bag of weed is. <laughs> I wonder if it's still on him hiding. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, all right, we'll move on to the next part of this stop. I wanted to get a shot of the boat, but I don't know if I must put it in dry dock because of the winter. A lot of the stuff's closed because of the winter season, you know? Not even due to the government shutdown, it's just the winter season. It gets cold here in Massachusetts. Uh, and we get over here. Uh, another thing, let me see here. All right, I'll let you look at it with me. This is uh, of the 104 passengers, these died in Plymouth during the first year. John Allerton, Mary, his first wife of Isaac Allerton, Richard Brittridge, Robert Carter, John Carver and Catherine his wife, James Chilton's wife, 
Richard Clark, John Creekson Sr., Sarah, first wife of Francis Eaton, Thomas English, Moses Fletcher, Edward Fuller and his wife, John Goodman, William Holbrook, John Hook, John Langmore, Edmund Margerson, Christopher Martin and his wife, Tigori Priest, Thomas Williams, Elias Story, Rose, the first wife of Miles Standish, Thomas Rogers, John Ridgedale and Alice's wife, Solomon Prowler, Joseph and their son, Alice, his, uh, William Mullins, Alice, his wife, and Joseph, their son, Alan Moore and a brother, grandchildren, um, Edward Tilly and his wife, John Tilly and his wife, Thomas Tinker and his wife and son, John Turner and two sons, William White, Roger Wilder, Elizabeth, the first wife of Edward Winslow. Yeah, well, he didn't make it. It was kind of rough the first, uh, first time go around. The bones of these pilgrims found at various times in, in and near this enclosure and preserved for many years and the canopy over the rock were returned at the time of the I can't even say that word Tercenary celebration and are deposited within this monument erected by the General Society of Mayflower Descendants AD 1920 Interesting, eh? Well, about a hundred souls came over in this first ship and began this work which God of his goodness hath hitherto blessed. Let his holy name have ye praise. Bradford, 1650. Ain't hey, nobody talks like that no more. <laughs> I just thought that was cool because, uh, really, nobody talks like that anymore. All right. Garnet fortifications. In 1776, an earthwork fort was erected at the Garnet for the protection of Plymouth Harbor. It mounted six cannons and was manned by military... Ma yeah, militia men from Plymouth, Kingston, Duxbury, and nearby towns. The first lighthouse built in 1768 stood alongside the fort while in search of American privateers. HMS Niger observed the fortifications and shots were exchanged during which one of the lighthouse beacons was destroyed. Well, I can, I'll keep learning. <laughs> and this be Mr. Sir William Bradford, governor and historian of Plymouth Colony, born in Osterfield, England, 1590, died in Plymouth, New England, 1657. Okay, well, that about concludes this portion. You take a shot of my beautiful van parked in this setting. Ah, she looks beautiful outside, eh? Hey, <laughs> I parked along by the water here. It's a pretty Friday. How you doing? Gave her a bath yesterday, and then it rained, but that was all right. It's clean. <laughs>
This would be the next destination, National Monument to the, to the Forefathers. Which has a pretty big detail. That's pretty tall. I did not get to go to the boat because the boat was not there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll find a thumbnail of it and put that in there some, somehow. Uh, so that's, that's just the beginning of Massachusetts. In the next video, going into, the, into Boston, into the Revolutionary War era, and um, <coughs> into the Revolutionary War <coughs> Jeez. Uh, era and um, start a little bit on that it's just like because it's this local history for me and uh, my, my pride in being an American because this is where it all started like I said um, alright I'm with that I'm gonna go find something else to do and I think I made a take a ride to the town and get a little B-roll going. Hey? Yeah, <laughs> yeah.